So in this video, I'm going to talk about hacks and React. And the reason for this video is because I went through the hacks roundup as I do every single week. And I stumbled across this link to a video by Jonas where he talks about how to create an application using hacks and React. And for me, I, I think this combination is, is quite weird or well, I thought it was quite weird when I first saw this video because I came from a, a JavaScript TypeScript background before going into hacks. And I think using JS or TS for a React app makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's what it's originally for. All the examples you see online use JS or TS and a lot of libraries support that as well. So why on earth would you use hacks to make a React app? So I, I had to think about this. And after a while, it came to the conclusion that this does make a lot of sense. Let me explain why. So for web dev, you have to use JavaScript for the front end. I mean, you can use languages that compile to JS, so TypeScript or Hacks or anything else that can compile. For the back end, you can use many different languages, Java, Ruby, Python, C Sharp, Go, whatever you want, there are multiple options. And in my experience working with different companies, whenever the back end language is different from the front end language, there is an immediate silo between both teams, so the front end team and the back end team. There's a barrier for the front end team to learn and understand the back end because the syntax is different and vice versa. And yes, there are some developers that can overcome that barrier and learn another language and get really good at it. But switching between both languages, there's a context shift, not only because one side is front end and one side is back end, so you think differently for, for both sides, but because the syntax is different and that doesn't help. Now, with Node.js, it is possible to use JavaScript on the back end. So there are scenarios where applications have been built with JS on the front end and JS on the back end. And in my opinion, that is the way to go for a small team. If you're a small team and you want to build an app really quickly, I would recommend using the same language on the front end and back end. The reason being the front end developer can understand the back end code and the back end developer can understand the front end code so that if one person is on holiday or is sick or whatever, another person can easily take over and understand what's going on. In fact, the whole dev team could move around the code base and get a good understanding of how the overall project works. And that is a good place to be because there are no knowledge silos. There isn't one person who knows one side really well. So here is a good example of that case where Proletariat Inc have built a game Spellbreak, and I talk about that in this video, which I'm gonna link in the description, but they use hacks to build the game in Unreal Engine. So hacks compiles to C++, and also they use hacks to build the server side for the multiplayer. In this case, hacks compiles to Node.js. So hacks being the kind of main high level language that's used for the whole project. The whole dev team gets an understanding of how everything works. The network person or the network team can easily go to the gameplay side of the code and understand what's going on because the syntax is similar, which is great. And the beauty of hacks is that you can use it for most popular game engines because it compiles to popular languages. So if you're using Unity, which compiles to C Sharp, you can use hacks, you can use hacks on Godot. And as you can see in this case, hacks works well with Unreal Engine. So going back to this video, if you are a small game dev team and you want to build a game as well as a website to promote your game, I think it's no brainer to use Hacks and React to build the site because you can use Hacks to build your game and you can jump to the web stuff and have an understanding of what's going on. You don't need to go ahead and learn JavaScript because you already know Hacks. You don't need to go ahead and hire a team to do it for you because you know Hacks already and you can use the same language you use to make the game to build the site and that is a major advantage. Now, there's some people watching this who knows React and knows Hacks and is thinking, Hacks has some limitations. Can you use React hooks in Hacks? Can you use React context? And I'd admit, building a React app in Hacks is more involved than doing it with just JavaScript. You might need to write more syntax. You'd have to do some more research to get things done. And that's why Jonas making these videos is a good start. You can use React hooks with Hacks, which is here, I'm gonna put a link in the description if you're interested. You can also use React Context in Hacks, which I didn't know until I went through Jonas's GitHub page. So this is all good stuff. Now, of course, Hacks can't keep up with React. So once React Suspense comes out or if any other new 
React feature comes out, then it will take a while for Hacks devs to implement a solution for it. But for the most part, you can go ahead and start developing a site with Hacks and React straight away. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it's giving you a better understanding of why something like this exists. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I post videos every single Thursday and hopefully I will see you in the next one.